The amount of elements and minerals required to transition to an all-electric wind and solar future is mind-boggling. I'll be doing further videos on this in due course, but suffice it to say, mining of almost every conceivable element would have to be carried out at rates almost unimaginable in order to meet a 2050 deadline. Side note, all of that mining would be fossil fueled, of course. With very little recycling infrastructure in place for EV batteries, we seem to be treating lithium as a limitless resource that we can keep extracting without much consequence. But as always, there are consequences, many of which have potentially devastating environmental impacts of their own. The EV revolution is anything but green in any case, but in this video we'll see how massive increases in lithium mining may have extremely detrimental effects on our most precious resource, water. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer turned Sydney YouTuber. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell and drop a comment down below. In order to regain some control over the production of lithium, most of which originates in China, US mining companies are looking at opening dozens of new lithium mines to support the requirements of EV and storage system batteries. But lithium mining is a highly water intensive process, with the only existing US lithium mine in Silver Peak, Nevada, using over 4 billion, with a B, gallons of water every year, pumped from underground aquifers. Remarkably, rather than this inconvenient fact just being swept under the carpet, as would normally be expected, it's been reported quite widely, thanks to a study from the Howard Center for Investigative Journalism at Arizona State University, which reviewed tens of thousands of pages of mining environmental reports, and its findings are concerning, link in the description. Among the investigation's key findings, there are no federal rules governing how much water any type of mine can consume. America's only operating commercial lithium mine is responsible for drying up nearby monitoring wells, according to reports from Nevada's largest water authority. The vast majority of proposed lithium projects responding to calls for increased supplies of domestic lithium are, in fact, owned by foreign companies or their subsidiaries. The majority of proposed lithium projects in the US intend to take water from already stressed sources like the Colorado River or strained groundwater systems. Federal authority to stop mines from extracting minerals, even from public land, is weak. The Department of the Interior, in more than 20 years, has not rejected a mining permit due to the harm a mine could cause. The federal government approved plans for a future lithium mine even after its operators disclosed it would create 272 million metric tonnes of tailings containing toxic waste. The experience at the existing Silver Peak mine is instructive in how future mines may impact the environment, and in particular, groundwater. At the Silver Peak Lithium Mine, the only place in the US where scientists can learn about the impact of active lithium mining on water and the surrounding environment, annual reports from the Central Nevada Regional Water Authority have repeatedly warned of problems. The authority is a unit of local government that works across nine counties. Its 2022-23 Groundwater Monitoring Program annual report concluded that decreases in local water levels near Silver Peak were due exclusively to dewatering throughout the Clayton Valley for lithium mining purposes. State water data reviewed by the Howard Center shows that increased pumping of lithium-rich water to 6.5 billion gallons as Silver Peak owner Alba Marl's spokesperson Alison Eckley said was planned would push the Clayton Valley Basin to its limits or beyond. State data already has shown that mineral heavy water has been allocated for use beyond what is available. Albemarle's own disclosure to the SEC shows that if the company follows through and increases pumping to 6.5 billion gallons a year, the basin will be pumped at or over the amount that naturally recharges every year. As is frequently the case, the law hasn't kept pace with technology. Claims for lithium or other minerals on public land are still governed by a law dating back to 1872, which, rather quaintly, requires the driving of a wooden stake into the land, literally staking one's claim. The report features a geologist who continues to stake loads of such claims in the hope of striking gold, well, lithium in fact, and then retire. But the law also has very limited restrictions on what can be done to the land during the mining. It was drafted on the basis that mining is inherently damaging to the environment, so pretty much anything goes. Under the mining law, if there is a discovery of a valuable mineral, there is a right to mine, so there can't be a complete shutdown of the mining operation. 
Interior's Deputy Assistant Secretary for Land and Minerals, Steve Feldgus, testified. As a result, companies proposing lithium mines on federal land can openly disclose they will use billions of gallons of water and be virtually guaranteed that the federal government will not stop them. That leaves it up to a patchwork of local ordinances and state laws, Democratic staff members of the House Committee on Natural Resources said, to protect some of the most stressed water sources in the country. Attempts at federal regulation have struggled, which, as mentioned just now, has left individual states to enact their own regulations, such as California's lithium extraction excise tax, (laughs) typical of California to tax anything that moves. But the real issue is why these quantities of minerals are required all of a sudden in the first place, and that would be for the crazy amounts of lithium batteries necessary for the renewable future of electrification and net zero. But the renewable future is not as green as its advocates would have you believe, not only requiring highly intensive fossil fueled mining, but also, as is clear from this report, putting essential water supplies at significant long-term risk.